From pasture to plate, making cheese at a Maine Farmstead Creamery. Welcome to Balfour Farm in Pittsfield. We are a 100 acre certified organic dairy farm, producing raw milk, cave age cheeses, fresh cheeses, and yogurts. We milk up to 12 Normandy cows. They spend as much time as possible grazing on pasture. Here, they're enjoying the first tender growth of spring. With their barrel-shaped physique, they have a large capacity for turning grass into rich milk. Normandy are a French breed, valued for their milk due to the high butterfat and protein that gives a higher yield in cheese making. They're also very easy to handle and have a gentle demeanor. We milk once a day, so the first job every morning is to go get the cows from the pasture. The fencing is moved each day to give the cows access to fresh grass. Here, Doug is putting the fence across the driveway so the cows will go into the barnyard when they come up the driveway. The coffee cup. This morning, the cows are in one of the further pastures from the farm, so it's nearly a half a mile walk back. We get plenty of exercise, and the cows do too. Sometimes rounding up the cows takes a little longer than you might think, and not everyone is always on the ball. Once we get everyone back up to the barnyard, the cows are brought into the barn and we get ready for milking. All the cows are trained to go to their particular spot and usually this works without a hitch. Once the cows are all in their stalls, their udders are washed and dried. We then apply a sanitizing dip and wait a few minutes. After wiping it off, the milking unit is attached 
Each cow is milked, and the milk travels through the pipes to the bulk tank in the milk house. In the milk house, the pipeline puts the milk directly into the bulk tank. A cow's body temperature is usually between 101 to 102 degrees Fahrenheit. By the time the milk hits the tank, it's cooled to 80 to 90 degrees. The bulk tank acts like a large refrigerator, further cooling the milk and holding the milk until it's ready to be used. Today, the tank is really full so we will be using the transfer pump to move the milk into the vat in the cheese room. The milk flows directly into the cheese vat. It has a hot water jacket and begins heating the milk. If we're making a raw milk cheese, we will heat the milk back up to around 90 degrees for culturing. If we're making a fresh cheese, the milk will be pasteurized and cooled before culturing. The cheese vat also acts as a pasteurizer. We use pasteurization for our cheeses that are aged less than 60 days. This is a federal requirement for dairy processing. We hold the milk at or above 145 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes before cooling back down to culture temperature, usually around 90 degrees. The vat pasteurizer records the times with a clock and the temperatures with thermometers. Maine also recognizes heat treatment of milk. This means that the cheese maker is manually recording the times and the temperatures instead of it having it done mechanically. So we have a vat of milk that's been cultured and it's set to ripen the milk. And we put the rennet in. This is feta, so it only sat for a short period of time with the rennet. And now we're gonna check for a clean break. You can kind of see there's some whey gathering along the edge here. And I can actually push it away from the edge and it comes away cleanly. So that's one sign, that's one way to check to see. And the, the curd actually feels firm. It's still kind of jello-y, but we can see a little bit of whey gathering on the top. And then if I, you can use your finger or a knife or a spoon, and when you come up, see how clean my finger is? And it's breaking cleanly across the surface of the curd. That is what's known as a clean break. And so this comes up cleanly. It's not all watery or um, milky, and it's not runny. So it's a nice clean break. That means that the curds are ready to be cut. So we're gonna go ahead and put the knives on and then go ahead and cut this curd. cutting knife, there are three marks, and I'm going to put those three marks on the same side as this arm, and it has those three marks on this side, so I'm going to make sure those are lined up. And it's important to do that because when we start cutting, we want this to turn in a certain direction, and it will cut in that direction, and if you put it in the other direction, if you put it in the other direction, then 
then it will actually stir and it won't cut the curd. And then we have to push the curd out from the edge. To make sure that it all gets cut. Up from the bottom to make sure there isn't a strip along the bottom as well. important to try and get the curd cut as uniform as possible so that as it's stirred and cooked the little pieces of cheese will dry out or lose way at the same rate. If you end up with big chunks of curd in your finished cheese then what happens is um, you get a wet spot in your cheese it can continue to acidify because it doesn't get salted. And then you end up with like a goopy spot in the cheese. You can see all the whey that's coming out of the curd now. So now we're going to shut this off and we're gonna let it settle for about five minutes or so and rest. And what happens then is all these little pieces of curd start pushing on each other and it pushes the whey out of it. This is very, very soft. If I push on that too hard, it'll just disintegrate into goo. Um, but it's just, it's floating gently and it's gonna slowly start to push down. You can see most of it, except where I, even where I just disturbed it, it's settling right down in there. So this is gonna settle for about five minutes or so and it's called healing. It allows the outer edge of the curd to toughen up a little bit so that it gets some structure to it. Then we're gonna put um, another paddle on and we're going to switch the direction so that we go into that stirring direction and not the cutting direction. And then we'll stir this on and on for on and off for about an hour. We'll look for a pH drop. And then when we have the right consistency and the curds dry out a bit, we'll pull the whey off and then we'll set up our molds and start scooping. So the whey is draining down out of this thicket here on the outside of the vat. And you can see more and more of the screen becoming visible here as it goes down. And as it drains down, we're gonna to start to see the curd appear. You see the reflection of the light from the ceiling in the way. Um, we'll start to see the curd appear under the surface of the way. And once we have the curd, the way down to the point where we can see most of the curd, then we'll stop it and then we'll start scooping. Okay, so as you can see, the whey has drained down to the point where we're just starting to see the curd layered underneath it here. I still have some more to drain. Um, I have my molds all prepped here and ready to go. They're all sanitized and I'm just gonna scoop them right up there. Um, I'm gonna let this go another minute or so and then set everything up for scooping. So here's our curd and um, a whey, it's called a slurry, when you scoop the curd and the whey together like this. And we're just gonna go along and try to evenly fill our hoops.
Once the wheels of cheese are all prepared, they are set onto the press. Some cheeses are stacked up and pressed in multiple layers for more weight for a harder cheese. Other cheeses like feta are just left to drain under their own weight and they're flipped multiple times to help with draining. Once the cheeses have pressed for a short period of time, they are unwrapped and flipped. We number all of our wheels so we can identify the different batches. As they start to age, they do all begin to look alike. The cheese then goes back into the press once it's rewrapped. The next step in the process for this cheese is adding salt. Salting is an important step in cheese making. Salt acts as a preservative by controlling the bacterial growth in the cheese. It helps with texture development and it removes additional moisture from the cheese. Salt also has a major role in developing flavors for cheese. Here we are dry salting our cheese. We rub the outside of the wheel liberally with salt over time, it will be absorbed into the body of the cheese. Other methods of salting include brining, which is a salt water bath, and direct salting the curds, such as in a cheddar cheese, where the salt is added directly to the vat and mixed in with the curds before pressing. Our cheeses are salted, and then they dry for a few days before going into the cave. brushing some cheeses. I've just done some tome, so I'll show you what that looks like. Here are some of our tome, our torn tome cheese sitting on the wooden shelves before they get brushed. And then I'll show you the brushing process. Cheese 
Phillips in the cave. And uh, we'll show you kind of a progression here. And then this is some that are younger that have um, not quite as much of rind development. Different time of the year, so this cheese is a summer cheese. It was just made. We put numbers on all the cheeses. So this one's 255. Sorry, 235. And we put a T after the tome, so we know it's a tome. The Gouda's get a G. A little bit about what we do here in the cave. Once cheeses are ready for sale, they are given a final brushing, cut, and wrapped. Maine cheeses can be found across the state, in our region, and even across the country. But the most important place to find Maine cheese is on your plate. So how do you find your Maine cheese? A quick search for the Maine Cheese Guild will bring you to an interactive map of member cheesemakers. Here you can find producers and retailers who, as supporting partners of the Guild, focus on selling Maine cheese. The map shows cheesemakers' locations near you. You can click on the member icon to bring up individual cheesemakers' information. You can also search by name of the cheesemaker from an alphabetical list. If you're looking for a specific type of cheese or other product, use the search bar to generate choices for sourcing what you're looking for. The Maine Cheese Guild website also provides information about the organization, membership, and events, like the Maine Cheese Festival.